Good morning and welcome to St. Andrews around 10 o'clock service. It's good to have you all with us this morning. I'm sorry. My mom's trying to find the live stream. Just give me a minute. <laughs> welcome, Candy, to our worship this morning. I'm glad you could click in here for a few moments. Um, it's good to have you all um, on our live stream this morning. Uh, worship went really well last night. We had Russ Langback and Connie in here uh, last night for music. 
It's wonderful to have him back uh, singing and playing his original music in our worship. Uh, a few announcements to run through. Um, our adult forum will be meeting uh, following this uh, worship this morning at 11.15. Uh, we'll gather via Zoom uh, to discuss the God who sees, chapter 2. Um, if you don't have the book or haven't read it, the chapter, you can still come on the Zoom and join the discussion as we, uh, as we uh, get through the, the book through our adult forum. So I'm going to thank our, especially our adult forum leaders um, who, have, uh, this, who have, are leading this group and uh, keeping this group going uh, through our time of COVID. Now you see him? No, you don't. This, um, the chapter, chapter two is about baptism. Um, and last week we, we were able to talk about the book, but also kind of a more general discussion about the topic. So yes, please join us today at 1115. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then um, later this afternoon, actually evening, we will have our St. Andrews and Teens meeting via Zoom. Yes. And so uh, we will look forward to that time with them. We had to cancel our Cali Strong uh, last night meeting. Um, but we'll meet with our youth this evening. So we look forward to seeing y'all to be part of that this evening. And this last week, our community center was um, transformed into a production site. Um, we shared some videos of that. Um, as we, a very small team of us, um, were able to support uh, this ELCA Youth Ministry Network extravaganza. It was entirely online this year. It was quite an experience. <laughs> Um, and we at we um, the event itself had seven, over 1,700 registered participants. Um, we at St. Andrews we were very excited and and overjoyed really that St. Andrews actually registered the largest group in the entire nation. Mm -hmm. um, we're so excited that so many of you got to be a part of something that is very close to Pastor Manuel's and my hearts, um, and something that we've been work we've been working on for many mm -hmm. years. Um, so today at 2 o'clock, we want to invite all those who participated to join us on Zoom. We sent that email link out, I think, yesterday or the day before. The days kind of blur together yep. a little bit. Um, so join us at 2 o'clock so we can talk about what you saw, what you learned, what you heard, what experiences you're carrying forward with you, and how um, your experience might help us to use some deeper imagining about our church and our ministry life together. Um, and what messages do we want to share with others? Um, so join us on Zoom at 2 o'clock for mm -hmm. that. If you need the link to that, um, just let us know and we'll try to get it to you. I know there were some email issues early on with the event, and um, we just want to make sure we can get connected with all of you and talk and share. So that's this afternoon. A couple things I want to share about that. We yeah. had uh, nearly 1,800 registrants for the extravaganza this year, which is uh, by far our largest uh, registration. Like three times, double. Yeah, it was pretty amazing. And the other piece is that we were um, one of three satellite sites. However, everything at the other satellite sites came through St. Andrews and then went out to you all. And that was only possible because of the technology fund that you guys did as we, over this last year. Um, the money that you invested allowed us to put on this extravaganza this year. So thank you all who contributed to that in your work and your uh, your funds uh, to make that happen. Yeah. Last piece is, along with our meeting this afternoon, you should uh, receive an email from the extravaganza if you registered at that registration email address. We're asking for evaluations, mm -hmm. and as an exec team member, we do read through all those evaluations and make decisions based on those evaluations for what um, the years to come will look like for the extravaganza. So please uh, take the few minutes to fill out those evaluations. Um, it's kind of like a form. So Pastor I Sarah likes forms. filling out forms. I love and, forms. So just get through that evaluation and thank you in advance for, for taking the time to fill out that evaluation. Yeah, so for those of you who didn't know, who saw it, saw it that screen with our MCs was over in our community center. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I want to share pictures so people could see how amazing it was that we could kind of take that space and use it for something like this. Someone mm -hmm. said, who knew that box? What, Lori Herman or someone yeah. said, who knew that this box could, we could think so outside of this box. Yeah. I mean, it was just such a cool, cool thing. It so worked out really well. Thank you all, yeah. Yep. Also, uh, we wanna thank you uh, for those who gave uh, last year um, throughout this time. Um, and so we, we sent out the uh, thank you letters, contribution letters. Uh, um, so if you uh, did not receive those, let us know. Um, they have been emailed and snail mailed to you um, 
hopefully you're receiving them. Yeah, and then um, as always, we know you support by giving financially, but you also um, continue to support um, by giving in-kind donations to, um, to those in need in our community. And Janine Eddy, through our council, has organized a really meaningful way to continue to support people in need in our community with our annual Super Bowl um, event where you can, in the past, we've been, and I think that's true this year, right? We're voting with our canned goods for yep. who's going to win the big game. And we have pictures uh, to share with you right now, so take us off the screen. And we're going to drop a picture of there of our Narthex, which is nearly, the floor is nearly full of all of the stuff that you all brought in. Um, and so, and then I also have a picture there of the boxes, and it appears that uh, <laughs> this congregation prefers that Kansas City's team um, over that Tampa Bay's team. But so, or the about, I don't care. Yeah, what about that? Which the always I don't seems care. to like be the thing, especially since San Diego doesn't have an NFL team anymore. Yeah. So, um, most of you just don't care. <laughs> <laughs> um, but good. those, I, you don't, maybe don't care about who wins the big <laughs> game, but you do care about our neighbors in need, and we thank you for that, and your donations are going to support um, the Cupboard on 54th, as well as the 3rd Avenue Charitable Organization. So again, it's the three S's, soup. Socks. Socks. Sanitizer. Sanitizer. I'm glad you, can, you had the S's. You can bring other canned goods besides soup. Um, also, we want to remind you to fill out that connection card. Are you leaving? I'm leaving. But well, we're not done. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I um, want to remind you to fill out that connection card um, because uh, there's a really important box to check. You don't want to talk about donuts with me, okay. Pastor Manuel? Go ahead. You got it. Okay. There's a really important box to check. Lent is coming up, which is a little bit painful for me to say because it's just, I can't believe it's here already. Um, but Ash Wednesday is February 17th. Um, and on February 16th, Fat Tuesday, we want to invite you to parade your cars as though we're having our own St. Andrew's Mardi Gras parade. Just parade them through the parking lot um, and pick up your Lent outside the box kits. Um, there's going to be ashes as well as ash-like um, temporary tattoos for you um, in your boxes, um, devotional books for around our theme for Lent, which is a story to tell. We're doing a storytelling emphasis during Lent. We're looking forward to the way that we're going to share stories in our midweek services, as well as some other activities to make your Lent more meaningful. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you sign up in advance and drive through Here during drive. our windows, mm -hmm. window times, yep. you get donuts. donuts. We will give you donuts. We're asking that you um, tell us what sort of donuts you want. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> we want to get the right flavors oh gosh, for you donuts. if you have a preferred flavor. Oh. Also... Um, <laughs> also, um, we also will have beads, um, but we'll be sitting at the curb throwing beads at you. Uh, <laughs> as a Mardi Gras That's kind of way of fun. doing things. So, um, look forward to seeing you all. I'm really excited about this yeah. Fat Tuesday event here at St. Andrews and getting to see so many of you in your cars, seeing your smiling faces, being masked, but at least seeing you. So, thank you. Yeah, and check out the Pinch of Salt for more announcements. Now, now I think we're done. Okay. I'm I know leaving. it was a lot. I mean, I'm leaving the camera. Okay. Um, so we're going to continue with our call to worship. I love this song, um, Indescribable. And thank you again to our musicians, our tech support, our, our, uh, our altar guild today.
of our hearts and still loves us the same. We hope that that is your experience when you worship with us here at St. Andrew's. God's deep, unconditional love for you. Um, we'll continue this morning with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy. Let us confess our sins. Reconciling God, we, we confess that we do not trust your abundance, and, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn is Gather Us In.
Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. The reading is from the 40th chapter of Isaiah. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretch out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught, and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown. Scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth, when he blows upon them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal? says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, no one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint. He strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary. And the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Word of God, word of life. Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As soon as Jesus and the disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases. And he cast out many demons. 
And he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. So how many times have you uh, walked into your place of work or your office and had everyone greet you? Not with like a, hey Norm kind of thing, but more with a, uh, we've been texting, calling you, where were you? How do you respond to that when you can sense their frustration with you? Where do you begin? I've learned from my many years here at St. Andrews is to start with making a written list of what needs to be taken care of, and then I start prioritizing that list. And then I begin knocking out things off the list, and I do take pleasure in crossing out each item on the list as it gets taken care of. And as I make it through, I sometimes forget to actually even sit down for lunch in the middle of the day, but just move right through trying to get all those tasks taken care of. What we have here in the first chapter of Mark seems to be like a conveyor belt of people seeking to be healed and comforted by this healing rabbi. In the past... It was difficult for us to imagine a line of people seeking healing. But now, with COVID, we can see those lines for ourselves. Maybe as I have, <clears throat> maybe as I have heard from many of you, you've been in those lines of healing for yourselves. And I've seen the lines downtown at Petco Park for myself blocks and blocks long, like an entire city is seeking healing. Maybe you've been one of those kind of rabbi healers for yourself, driving your loved ones for their shots. Or maybe you've been the one administering the shots to strangers, hundreds of strangers who have been waiting, waiting not just in line, but waiting for months to receive the vaccine so they can see and hug their loved ones again. So now, imagine after going through your lists of tasks and completing those tasks, or imagine the joy and reward of administering those vaccines to so many in need, but also imagine the fatigue you feel all the emotions and seeing so many people and in this day probably more people on one day one day than you've seen this entire year Jesus picks up and moves on to another place the many times that I've read this story and I'm always amazed that even Jesus felt the need to move on he moves on and he moves on after taking time to get up early in the morning when it's still dark so that he might find a deserted place to pray. Well, I do receive so much from getting up before dawn and making my way out for a hike or a bike ride or a long, a long drive. I don't do it very often, and there's part of me that finds this very strange, and it's kind of disorienting too, because there's work to do. There are hurting people. There are sick people, 
hungry people. People who were lost and weary, sinking into the depths of grief and despair. And I myself have been one of these people over the last year, feeling lost and weary and grieving from so much loss this year. Losses we've all felt and can empathize with each other about. But why did Jesus have to depart for that early morning prayer session? Couldn't he have opened the office a little earlier that day? Couldn't Jesus have stuck around a little while longer and alleviated some more pain, alleviated the loss in that city, in that place? Did he have to get up and go so quickly? I know that I've often struggled with taking the time for Sabbath, for rest and renewal. And this particular year is no different. And sometimes I feel guilty and worry about what people will think. There's always one more phone call to make. There's always that email to send. One more item on that endless list of tasks. Isn't there too much work to be done to running off, then running off to a retreat, headed off to another extravaganza or some Lutheran conference in South America or Germany or Wisconsin? <laughs> <laughs> and now this week at St. Andrews, it has been an extraordinarily busy week as we welcome talent and tech people to pervert, produce our first fully online live stream ELCA Youth Ministry Network extravaganza. For so many in ministry, both volunteers and paid staff, these few days that we gathered together on a live stream for this extravaganza, it was a deserted place for us. Not by location, whether it was Charlottesville or Kansas City, St. Louis, Anaheim, or even Minneapolis. But this event that Pastor Sarah and I get to volunteer for each year, this event is the gift of rest, of learning, of worship for those who get to participate in it. The Reverend Angela Khabib this weekend in one of the sessions said, it is part of our spiritual DNA to reform, to reshape, and renew. And that goes for us as individuals, goes for us as a church, here at St. Andrews as well. As much as Jesus needed that renewing and reshaping time away, so do each of us to renew ourselves. And more than that, I think Jesus demonstrates that you don't have to do it all. You can't save everyone. Sometimes you have to move on. Sometimes you have to pick up and go where the Spirit sends us. Even if it means people are still going to be in need. Because honestly, there's always, always going to be people in need. In our text from Mark this weekend, we have Jesus demonstrate to us clearly that the world doesn't revolve around me or you. We are more than tasks we accomplish. And that waking up before dawn and finding a quiet place to connect with God is sometimes the most important thing we can do. And in just a moment, we're going to show you a video from the work of the people, the end of the sermon. But before we do that, I want to quote one more of our speakers from our extravaganza. One of our colleagues in ministry. Joe Davis, and he said, There is so much joy and beauty and healing 
If we just have the courage to trust the Holy Spirit and where we're being led to next. And so I pray you will trust the Holy Spirit to lead you to rest and renewal this week. Amen. When Mark begins his account of Jesus' life and work, it's like he can't even stop to catch his breath. The word immediately is used ten times in the first chapter alone. Immediately Christ ascends from the water. Immediately he calls his disciples. Immediately he leaves the synagogue. Clearly, even this early into his ministry, Christ is gaining a reputation and his name is becoming known. Mark says that after Jesus healed the many, the whole town was at his door. But then, in the midst of everything, Jesus leaves. In the morning, while it is still dark, Jesus wakes up, walks out, and finds peace in what Mark calls a desolate place. And there he prays, doesn't say anything to anyone, doesn't leave a note, he's just gone. And this sets his disciples scrambling. The crowds want to show and they can't find their main act. They search everywhere, and when they finally find him, he says, no, let's move on. In this frenzy of activity and fame, Christ sneaks out the back, prays to his Father, and reorients himself to his calling. Of course, there are many things to be learned from this passage, but what stands out to me is that Christ recognizes his need to get away. Even the Son of the Most High can't get his thoughts straight in the midst of things. He needs that time alone to think, to pray, to regain his focus. There's this greed that comes with being in the spotlight and Christ rejects it outright. Fame and power are not why he's here. It's not why you're here either. Get away, listen to your maker, get clarity. Remember what you're here for.
continue with our prayers, and we do have a few prayer updates. Um, we're praying for um, successful surgery for Alan Parent, Sandy Konar's godson, who had surgery this last week. So praying that it is successful and receives that he receives a good pathology report. Um, also, just came in um, yesterday a prayer um, for a friend of Marilyn Dubas, Mary King, who's been in Kaiser Hospital since Wednesday um, and pos facing possible surgery. Um, so praying for God's guidance and decision making um, and then peace um, and comfort with the final decision of what they do. Um, and then also successful surgery and healing and strength um, and, as it's hard for Mary and her family since they can't be together due to the pandemic. Finally, um, we're praying for peace and comfort for the Fisher family. These are friends of Cindy Page who live in Lake Elsinore. They lost two toddlers and their 90-year-old grandmother in a house fire this last week. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the church, for our ministries of healing and wholeness, for hospital, hospice, and military chaplains, for those serving in prison ministry, for all who proclaim freedom and release in the name of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the nations, for all who lead in cities and towns, states and countries, for community organizers, school officials and CEOs, for international health organizations, that in times of trial, fear and hopelessness, they find freedom in service to those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For this congregation, for outreach and social ministries centered here. For those who join us in online worship and those who do not have access to technology. For ministries of companionship and support, our Stephen ministers and lenses of love befrienders. For young people in this place and for all who open us to new understandings. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all wearied by life's burdens, for those who are poor, for those lacking supportive relationships, for those crushed by debt, for those struggling with chronic pain or other illness, for those exhausted from overwork and stress and anxiety, and for all who cry out to you. And for those now that we name silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Can we share peace this morning? Peace, peace. He's got to wait today. You took that peace very seriously last night. You took a, a restful little peaceful nap um, for a minute in worship. It's a good thing I cut my sermon short. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, I lost my place. Oh, okay. I mean, at this time, we continue with our receiving of the offering again. We thank you for your ongoing support that makes the ministries here possible. And we thank you for the ways you're also giving your offerings of canned items and sanitizer and socks. And anytime there's a need, we know that you always respond. So we want to thank you for that. Um, it's very easy and safe to give online. And we are going to share, I think soon we have to talk about it a little bit. Um, there is a new Lori Line Scholarship Fund, Pastor Lori Line Scholarship Fund, um, that is being um, put together through the Pacifica Synod. We know some of you read about that and are interested in giving to that as well. So we want to know, we'll, want you to know, we're figuring out a way to make that happen. Um, but that's a very beautiful thing too, in honor of Lori's memory. So lots of beautiful things to celebrate 
Um, but like we said, it's easy to give online, either through our website or um, on Venmo. And um, again, thank you. So now we'll continue with our offering song. the children forward to the screen, tablet, your phones, your computers at this time. You can come up a quick little story for you um, to share as part of our, our message uh, this morning. So um, when I was a kid, um, Christmas came or birthday came, along with all the gifts and toys, we also got batteries as part of Christmas. And often that was at the bottom of the, uh, of my uh, batteries. We got batteries as part of the gifts. Um, and at the bottom of that stocking were the batteries for all the toys that we received. Is this not true, Kristen? Was that not true? No, in your we family? put the batteries in the toys. 
What? <laughs> that means you had to open those yes. toys up. And you and, undo all the things yeah. and you put them back in the box. So that they can Your parents them. opened your toys before no, you did? did no, I mean when you were a kid. We're the same age. So when you were a kid, you didn't get batteries and chips? No, I didn't get batteries at all. Oh. <laughs> Not until after. If I, if I had a battery toy, are you kidding? <laughs> well, you, a few years ago, were your batteries just all D's, though? Now, a lot of them are decent. I don't know the kind of batteries. <laughs> so, yeah. So, anyway, when I was a kid, we used to get batteries as part of the gifts for Christmas or birthdays. But now, all these gifts that we get, all these toys, are rechargeable. And so, like your phone, like my phone here, I've got to charge it every night, plug it in the charge. There's a battery in there, but it's rechargeable. My watch is rechargeable. Um, I got to put it up on its little, I don't know, little bed so it charges <laughs> overnight. Um, my laptop, your laptops, your tablets, whatever you're using for school, you don't change out the batteries. You plug them in and, and charge them up. And you're probably struggling sometimes to find your, your cord to plug that stuff in as well. And so um, as I was thinking about that, as I plugged in my phone, this week because I was draining it every day with the extravaganza, I was reminded of my own need to be recharged. And in our text this morning from Mark, we find out that even Jesus needed time to recharge. After healing and teaching and speaking to all these people, and he got some rest that night, and he got up early in the morning and went out and found a deserted place where he could recharge. And how did he recharge? How did he get renewed in that time? By praying and resting in that time by himself. A little introversion time for him, I think. <laughs> and so I think we all need that. And I want to remind you as, as kids, as your students um, and your teachers need those recharge times, you need that time of recharge too. Um, I know for when I was a kid, my recharge time was getting outside and running around, getting on my bike and running and riding around, going outside and playing um, in the fields, in the creeks, just being outside in the sun and getting that fresh air was my place of recharge. And so I'm going to remind all of you to do that as well, just as Jesus did. And so now let us pray. Grace, so we thank you uh, for toys that we get to play with, the toy trains and um, phones and tablets and all the toys that we receive around Christmas and our birthdays. We uh, thank you for uh, being our place of recharge, a place where we can focus in on you. Um, we thank you for renewing us in so many ways, but most of all, in renewing our faith each and every day. In your name we pray. Amen. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray.
We remember in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Um, and so at this time, we want to make sure you know that you are welcome to receive communion in whatever ways you can, um, where, wherever you are. If you're on your own, that's okay. If you have others with you. And also using whatever elements you have available that are meaningful for you today. You know, it can be complicated to get, you know, the exact right things. Just trust and know um, that what we believe so deeply is that Christ is present and comes to us in ordinary things. i 
you have done great things for us. And we rejoice in this bread and cup. You give us life forever. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is, I love to tell the story. I want to um, point out something, though. The first, what, in Gather Us In, our musicians changed the words. They told me. And I don't know if you all heard that. But they changed the words. The original words for our opening hymn for Gather Us In, here in this place, the new light is streaming. And you changed it to, now from this place, our service is streaming. Now from this place, our service is streaming. That's pretty clever. I like that a lot. Um, we're going to do our closing hymn. I love to tell the story. Go in peace, serve the Lord.